Hello, this is Information Service Engineering, lecture number two, Natural Language Processing, part two. In this part of the lecture, we are going to see the second part of language model and engrams. In the previous part of the lecture, we discussed what is a conditional probability and how to compute the probability of uh, a sequence of words using the conditional probability of the words in there. So this is the formula which is the generalization of the Bayes theorem for modeling a sequence of words in a natural language. And we saw the following example which we can uh, just repeat. So to compute the probability of a sequence of words to be or not, we have first to compu compute the probability of the word to multiplied to the conditional probability of the word be given that the word to comes right before it multiply to the conditional probability of the word or, given that both words to and be come right before it, multiply to the conditional probability of the word not, given that all th three words of do, to, be and or come uh, right before it. But how, uh, how costly is actually this thing? So the complexity uh, of, of this uh, model is given by the following formula. So it's O uh, of a size of V in the power of N star, where V here is the vocabulary that uh, we will use for the experiment, and N star is the maximum sentence length we have. So let's see what it means in real numbers. So we know that the uh, Edwards, the Webster's uh, third uh, new international dictionary in English has 475,000 of main headwords. And an average English sentence has a length of 14.3 words. So a rough uh, estimation here gives us a uh, complexity of O of 475,000 uh, in the power of 14. But by applying a specific n-gram model, we can make this model more compact. Uh, since here we are not going to go for a maximum sentence length we can have in a corpus, but the n is fixed, is fixed to the specific uh, n-gram model we are going to use. But before going deeper, what, uh, how do we actually uh, determine the probability of the words? We haven't talked about it yet. And let us start with, again, some basics. So first of all, we have a corpus. A corpus is a computer-readable collection of text or speech. There are many famous corpus right now on the web. Here we have some of them, which you can also have a look. First, there is a corpus of contemporary American uh, English, which consists of 520 million words in uh, US English and covers the period of from 1990 to 2015. Then is the British National uh, Corpus with 100 million words uh, in UK uh, English, uh, cover the pe covering the period from 1991 to 1994. Then is the International Corpus of English with uh, 23 local corpora, corpora is the plural of corpus, uh, where each one of them consists of 1 million uh, words. And last we have the Google Ngram corpus, where here we have Ngrams from printed sources collected by Google, covering the period from 1500 to 2008 in languages like English, Chinese, French, Ger German, Hebrew, Italian, Russian or Spanish. And here actually we have an example of this Google Books Engram viewer, which we, you can also uh, use. Uh, we gave four words uh, separated by comma, selected the period we wanted to check, so between 1800 and uh, 2000s, uh, selected the corpus we wanted to search from, and here we have this histogram. So what we can note here is that the term democracy was already there before uh, 18 where the term uh, capitalism probably appeared in the early of 1900. So you, this is online and you can also use it and play with the Ngram viewer of Google. Uh, but let us go again back to probabilities. We talk about probabilities and what are probabilities? Probabilities are based on counting things. And in this case here, is, they are based on counting words. So a language consists of a set V of words, which is called vocabulary. And a word can occur several times in a text. So here we distinguish between word token and word type. 
So what is a word token? So what word token is each occurrence of word in a text. So how many words we have in a text? And the word type is each unique occurrence of a word uh, in, in the text. So how many distinct words we have in the text? And let us just make it completely clear with an example. So we have the sentence, let's say that this is our corpus or our text, to be or not to be. So how many word tokens we have here? So we have six word tokens. It means that we have six words in this sentence. If you count them, they are six. But how many word types we have? So we have only four word types. Why? Because two of them, two of those words, the word to and uh, B, they are repeated twice. So that's why we have the difference between the word tokens and the word types. So as I said, we, are, uh, we want to compute probabilities and we are based on counting words. So before even starting going to compute any n-grams, we have to analyze the corpus we deal with each time. So here we did the analysis of the Shakespeare's example, which you can find there and make also uh, your own analysis. So we should know what are the words that they are there in the corpus, how many of the words are there in the corpus, the count of the words, meaning how many times each word appears, and then also the frequency of, uh, the frequency of these words in the text corpus before going back to the engrams. So let's go back then uh, to the engram models uh, now. So the intuition of the engram model is that instead of computing the probability of a word given its entire history, which here it might mean given the entire text which uh, the word belongs to, or even given the entire corpus, this can be the entire history, we can approximate the history by just the last few words. And this more specifically for the bigram model means that we approximate the probability of a word given all its previous words by using only the conditional probability of its presenting word, which is known, as we already saw, as the Markov assumption. So the Markov assumption says that uh, instead of computing the probability of a word given all the uh, presenting words, we will do it given only the uh, last word before it. So using the Markov assumption to compute the probability uh, of a text sequence uh, for a big gram model, we have the following transformation. So from the probability of the whole, whole sequence of words where for the word uh, w sub i, we have to consider all the previous words, so w sub 1 to w sub i minus 1, then the Markov, Markov's assumption is that we will give, if we want to compute the probability of a word w sub i, uh, we will do it only by considering the probability of uh, the occurrence of the word w sub i minus 1 here. But how to estimate actually the probabilities of those n-gram models? The way to estimate it, the most famous way to do it is using maximum likelihood estimation or MLE as it's called. So the definition here is that is a method of estimating the parameters of a statistical model given observations by finding the parameter values that maximize the likelihood of making the observations given those parameters. So the MLE, the maximum likelihood estima estimation of uh, the parameters of an engram model is computed by normalizing counts from a corpus. And let's see what this actually means. So we want to compute the following probability, the probability of the word W sub n, given that the word W sub n minus, y, n minus 1 is already there. So this, for the maximum likelihood estimation, is translated to the counts of those big grams, so those words coming together one after the other, so the word W sub n minus 1 and then followed by W sub n, so how many times we found this pair of words, divided to all uh, big grams where the word W sub n minus 1 is there as a first word. This uh, specific part is also translated, if you just think a bit about it, to the counts where we have the word w sub n minus 1 in our corpus. So in the end, we end up with that equation for the maximum likelihood estimation of n-gram models. 
So let's see an, a real example how it works. So first we had the, uh, this is the first in the top of the slide. We had how we compute the probability of a sequence up to now. Then by applying the Markov assumption, so the big grams, let's see how now how we will do it. So uh, to compute the probability of the sequence to be or not, now we have to compute first the probability of the word two multiply to the conditional probability of b, given that 2 comes before it, multiply to the conditional probability of 4, given that b comes before it now, and you see the difference, we don't consider two words but only one, and last multiply to the conditional probability of the word not, given that or comes right before it. And if we want to compute the maximum likelihood estimation now for this specific probability here, so the conditional probability of not given or, we do it in the following way. So that means we have to count how many times this bigram or not appears in our corpus, divided to how many times just the word uh, or appears in our corpus. And this is how we compute the maximum likelihood estimation for a probability. And here we have all the, all, some of the n-gram models we can have in a, in a formal way. So first is the unigram, means on only one word. So here we compute the probability of each word multiplied. Then it comes the bigram, which we already saw. So we have the probability of a word given that its previous word is uh, there. Then is the trigram, where we consider two previous words. And in the end is the more general case, which is the n-gram. And here is us trying to generate some text based on uh, Shakespeare's uh, corpus and using different models. So we use a unigram, a bigram, a trigram, and a quadrigram model. And we try to generate uh, some text by training it to uh, Shakespeare's corpus. So if you notice, the first two uh, models, the unigram and the bigram, they gave quite some uh, poor uh, results. So especially the first one, apart that the sentences, they don't make sense, the created sentences, you see that we have punctuation marks in places like a word and after that a punctuation mark. So this is definitely not a good model. Similar is the case for bigram. Uh, here, okay, the punctuation marks, they behave a bit better. We can have also words where in pairs they make sense, but still not a valid sentence. Where we see that in trigram and quadrigram things are already much better, and in quadrigram we can say that these are sentences that look like that they are uh, written by Shakespeare. So the thing is that the quadrigram is a richer model, of course more expensive, but also have a better uh, accuracy, better results here. So in the next part of the lecture, it's going to be the last part of language model and engrams.